Hi everyone, it's Fanola Howard for How Great Marketing Works. And today, this is our episode seven, which is how in our Ask Fanola How series. And this week we're talking about how to build a customer profile that helps your marketing. Now, this is just a very interesting one, but I say that every week, I know. <laughs> Sorry, love to forgive me because I really do love marketing. So this is a very interesting one for me because most people feel like they really know their customers. And in all my years of working in marketing, um, and I'm over 25 years working in marketing, this is the area that I spend the most time with clients. And it's the area where the most gold can be harvested. And that is about really, truly understanding your customers, okay? Today, so let me get started, okay? Episode seven, Ask Finola How, we're talking about profiling customers, okay? So we get to this point in the process when we've done that first kind of sieve. We get to this point when we're looking at, if you remember last week, we saved for resonance and we saved for profitability because there's no point in profiling customers that aren't res don't resonate with you. There's no point in saving for customers that are not, are not profitable for you. So we need to kind of take those two boxes before we dig a little bit deeper. So we save for resonance and we save for profitability. And then we look at our long list of customers. And hopefully at this point, you've narrowed that down to three or four customers. And this is where we really get down and dirty because this is the work that's actually hard in terms of marketing, but it is the work that will give you the greatest impact and make your marketing fit your customer. Because so often, this is the work that we have to sit down and think about and drop our assumptions about our customers and be very strategic and very conscious about what they need. And also to move our own voice out of the way so that we can create space for their voice, okay? And I created a very simple worksheet or simple process to really get the essence of those seven things you need to know about your customer. It's actually six, but I always leave space for one more because customers will always surprise you, always teach you, and always help you learn something deeper about what you can do for them and how you can best serve them. So like, let's get stuck in, okay? So if you have a sheet of paper, because I always like you to have a sheet of paper because it's really good to document stuff and not just keep it in your brain, but put it on paper. And the reason you put it on paper is because you get to that deeper place. It allows you to see things that you can't see clearly if it's kept in your head. So what we want to do is the first thing, right? Step one, okay? I want you to do the obvious. Step one is all the obvious stuff, the demographics. Very, very often I see people, small businesses, medium businesses, large business being too generic about their customers and they capture it in a certain age group or a certain job title, but they don't go deeper than that. But this first piece of information allows you to do all the obvious. And this is where you can, after this point, then you're doing more than anybody else actually in the marketplace. And that's quite, kind of interesting. So your snapshot piece of your customer, which is, You've already decided the types of customers. The next thing that I want you to do is to do the obvious. What gender are they? What age are they? Where are they located? Any, anything that's very obvious about them in terms of what they do for a living, all of that kind of stuff, but very, very obvious stuff. And to go, the next stage is to go that little bit deeper because previously, we would have always think, thought in a very two-dimensional way about our customers and never thought too deeply. And I always think of this example for you. And there's a reason why in the uh, post that talks about this, I always use the image of this uh, young woman with tats in front of a car. She's the unexpected, okay? And your customers are always the unexpected. And I always use this example of, thinking back that we've moved beyond the 1950s where the little woman is sitting at home with a martini in her hand to hand to her husband when he gets home from work. We've moved beyond that. We have 
unexpected interests. We are not two-dimensional creatures. We have many different parts to our um, being, to our livelihoods, to the way we look at things. And your customers are the same. And I remember giving this example um, with one of my classes when I used to deliver them in person, which was your customer could be a librarian with tattoos that bungee jumps on the weekend. And thinking that this was the most incredulous example of what a customer could be so that you could go deeper about them and not make assumptions. And of course, someone tentatively put up their hand in the class and said, I'm a librarian who has tattoos and bungee jumps on the weekend. And so again, I was humbled yet again <laughs> by my customers teaching me yet again, okay? So I want you to humble yourself and open your minds and open your ears to actually hearing the things that they want to teach you, okay? And that's really important. So step one, get beyond the obvious, okay? Step two in your mind, I want you in the get beyond the obvious is to think of that librarian with tattoos that bungee jumps on the weekend. They are always something unexpected. Allow yourself to be surprised, okay? Step two in your customer profile, what I want you to look at is think of their life, okay? And think, try to put yourself in their shoes and write a little paragraph that says, life looks like this for me, okay? So if your example customer is um, Jeff, who is the CTO of a large tech company, I want you to write down what his day looks like from the moment he wakes, as much as you know, because what you'll realize is how little you know. And you'll be asking me, why would I possibly do that, Fanora? What's that got to do with my business? But what it helps you understand is it guides, it starts you on this path of understanding what his constraints are or what her constraints are. And thinking about what are the things that affect their daily life in what they do for a living or what affects their daily life in, in that point where you can build a relationship with them. So if they have a very relaxed, easygoing life, if they have a very strained, going, strained life, what are the things? And you can capture that by telling their story. And it also has this added benefit of humanizing them. And that's really, really critical. So do this short paragraph. You will hate doing it. And I know you will hate doing it, but it has this impact of humanizing them and it also helps you uncover unexpected things. And in all of this profiling is about helping you uncover and dis discover unexpected things. And we want to create a space where that is easy for you to do. So see if you can tell the story of their life. See if you can build that story over every conversation that you have with them. Because the other key message I want to get across to you is you will never stop learning about your customer. And the day you believe you have stopped learning about your customer because you know everything is the day you have lost. So see if you can start to build the little, and I assume this, the little that you know about the customer and what their daily life is like. And when you've, know, when you've written down all you know, then see what you'd like to know from that. And the next time that you talk to them, that you speak to them, see if you can add something else to that story. Again, I make the assumption that you will not know enough here. And that takes the pressure off you because a customer profile is not a destination, it's an ongoing journey, okay? So we've kind of humanized them now. Step three for you, what I want you to do is write down their pain points that's associated with, with what you can do for them. So what are things, and actually pain points in general that they're sharing with you. And what I want you to do is, you know, figure out what's causing them a challenge, what the problem is, but think of it as a pain point because I want you to articulate it in the words that they use. Use the language that they use because this is the real key in customer profiling because if you start to use the language they use in describing their pain points, then you can reflect back on that and use it in how you communicate to them. Because most of the time, when we're trying to attract our customers to us, we're trying to send a message to them that says, I know you, I understand you, I feel your pain, 
I'm with you on your journey. I'm trying to understand you. And if you can use language that they in fact use themselves, then you will have built a step closer to building trust with them because it shows that you understand. And when you show that you understand, then you have the potential for getting them to trust you. And I, want, I mean that as not a manipulation, but as a way to get closer, to serve better. That's the purpose. We understand their pain so that we can serve them better. And when you understand their pain and not distill it into, I've said, I find this really challenging or I hate to do this or whatever is the language that they use, do not distill it. Do not distill the many different versions of that because you'll miss something. We always miss something when we make assumptions about them. Yes, it's good to use their language. Yes, absolutely. And it's, this is what makes your marketing better because you connect with them. And even last week I said this to you, start in this, this is why we ask this resonance question is you've got to like them. And when you like them, you can hear them, okay? So this is step three is understand their pain. Do not distill the pain, capture the language they use and keep it here in this profile, okay? So we've gone through this step now of one, getting a snapshot, doing the obvious, okay? And allowing space to learn something new. The second thing we've done is we've said we're going to tell their story. What's life look like for them? Because we're trying to unearth things and not make assumptions about them. Step three is about understanding their pain points and articulating their language, capturing their language, not articulating it, capturing their language that you can use it later to help you communicate better. That's the purpose, okay? Next stage, number four, when you're building a profile, is when the pain is gone, okay? Say that the pain goes away and you've served them in such a way that you've helped them move that out of the way. Then I ask you the question of what motivates them? What is the dream that they're trying to achieve? Because we don't always live in pain and neither do our customers. So what is it that they would love to do that you could possibly help them do? What is their motivation? So for example, if you work with a company, a guy who works for a company and he has a great problem that you can solve and you've solved it. After that is solved, what's his goal? What is her goal? What are they trying to achieve? If you work with kids, parents of kids to solve a problem for them, once you've solved it, what do they want next? What's the piece that they want next? So when this problem is solved for them and they've relaxed a little, what is it that they would love to achieve? Because in here is future opportunity. In here is a way to build a recurring relationship, a trusting relationship, and something that will help you go to the next stage, okay? And then you see we're moving beyond this just flat surface level relationship with customers that only give you a finite amount of information to help you market better. This is about building collaborative relationships, about building partnership, about building recurring business to help you communicate better and better and better. And always, not just for a one-shot deal, okay? This is about building recurring revenue, deeper relationships, all of that good stuff, okay? The next piece, which is number five, okay, five and six are alike. Five and six can often be confusing. Five, I ask you, what's their footprint? So if they are on social media or if they are active in their job or in their role somewhere or on a, um, on a forum or something, like so if it's a parent or the unparent, where are they speaking? Where can you hear their voice, see them in action? What are they doing? Like if they're a parent, are they on a parent's association? Are they, if they're in a company, are they, do they have a podcast? If so, where can you see them actively speaking or writing or communicating in their voice, in their role? So what's that footprint? And that way, that's the place, and it could be a LinkedIn profile, you know what I mean? So that's the place that you know where they speak and share their opinions and stuff. That's footprint, okay? Capture that, because this tells you about what you're gonna do later, about what they're, what they're interested in, what they're, 
primary means of communication is, okay? The next step, which is like footprint, is, is not footprint, but it's what do they consume in social media or otherwise? What do they read? What do they watch? What do they listen to? Because you need to be where they consume content. You need to be in the place that they're listening to a podcast, that they're in a network, that they're, whether it's a parenting network, uh, a professional network, a whatever it is. So what are they reading, watching, listening to? It's just all the senses, reading, watching, listening to. What are you reading, watching, and listening to? Find that, and that allows you to understand the topics that they're interested in, the areas of interest, and you might also have read, listen, and watch for their personal life, read, listen, and watch for their professional life. You have to decide what is the bit. Are you building a relationship with them in their personal life? Are you building a relationship with them in their professional life? Where is the best place for you to be? Because when we do funnel in a couple of weeks time, sales and marketing funnel in a couple of weeks time, one of the first things I'm going to say is be where your customers are. This is where you find out where your customers are. So that is number six. Where are your customers? What are they consuming? Because if we know what they're consuming and where they're consuming, then that's where we can be. Lastly, because there's always a last thing. And the last thing is always, what else? What else can give you a deeper understanding of your customer to help you communicate with them better, to help you serve them better, to be where they are? Because although I like nice, although I like structure about how I organize things, because it helps me to focus, I don't like to be constrained by it. So I will always ask this question of what else? What have we not thought of yet? Where are they giving us clues because our customers consistently give us clues about how to serve them better? And we have to be humble enough to be able to see it, see it and hear it. So what else is there? So that is my Ask Finola How, episode seven, how to build a customer profile that helps you in your marketing. So if you have any questions, about how to build a better customer profile or even where to start, post them in, in the comments below. And if you would like the worksheet that I use, that I developed to help people have a better customer profile, I'm also gonna upload that here at the end of this video. So wonderful working with you all again and see you next week for the next stage of really understanding customers, how we can serve them better and make an impact on our bottom line. Take care, have a great day.